Okay, dudes and dudettes around the world, I'm happy to be with you. I got my flowers flying in the wind here, just because I like flowers flying in the... What are they, dandelions, I think? Anyway, um, I'm going to read a little more of the book like I read yesterday, because I just got to a chapter that's not in the uh, first two books, which are the uh, short versions that are more public. They're trying to promote these more because they're not as shocking, but they put the shocking ones in here. That's what I read the other day. So, <clears throat> I'm going to read another shocking chapter, which uh, I'm really glad I read today because uh, when I watched the movie Braveheart, I was pissed off. I don't know, maybe I have, because I have access to universal intelligence, universal awareness, I knew that it was a bunch of bullshit with the, how they portrayed William Wallace in the movie Braveheart. And uh, since... The author who claims to be Paul McCartney of this of this book, or claims to be William Wallace uh, Campbell, the replacement for Paul McCartney, um, he should know if that's his family. He said he read from the family diaries the life of of his great 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 grandfather or something like that. So anyway, I'm just gonna <coughs> instead of trying to take it from memory because reading just once through a chapter and trying to remember everything by memory is a little bit difficult. I'm going to actually start reading the chapter. Maybe I'll maybe I'll read the whole chapter and maybe I'll just read part of it now and read the rest later. The uh, chapter is called, it's the 44th chapter, page 410 of the 666 page book. I'll explain later why the book is exactly 666 pages if I didn't already do that. Okay, because that's a very important number to the person who took over the beat, uh, who took over the uh, part of uh, Paul McCartney when Paul McCartney died September 11th, 1966. Okay, so here we go. Sir William, my ancestors are Scottish and Irish. John and Arlene Crawford, my great-grandparents, both yearned to preserve their Celtic family roots. <clears throat> Arlene diligently gathered family stories and oral traditions mostly from relatives, and wrote them in an old book that she kept beside her Bible. The neighbors ordered copies that she wrote by hand and sold for oats and wool. She also made a copy of the book for the reverend, one for each of her children, and one for each of her siblings. The more recent copies had more stories. When new people would read her collection, they would often return bringing her extra information to be added to subsequent editions. In her ornate wooden covered Bible, which she received from her grandfather, she kept the family genealogy records. That old large family Bible was given to her daughter, Helen, my grandmother, who still had it when I was a child. It was she who added in my name, William Wallace Shepherd, lists, listing me as the 28th generation grandson since Sir William Wallace. So Sir William Wallace was the guy that the Braveheart movie was made about, played by uh, Mel Gibson, I think, or I can't remember who played, yeah, I think it was Mel Gibson. Anyway, I, I watched the movie and I got really pissed off because I, I guess subconsciously or super consciously knew that this was a t terrible portrayal of this person's life, um, which I was alive at the time, he was alive, but I was in Japan. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to find my other videos to know who I was in Japan at the time. Okay. But in Japan, we didn't have any any knowledge of this incredible person named William Wallace, Sir William Wallace, in Scotland at the time. But it's most likely the reason why Sir James Paul McCartney, which is really William Wallace Shepherd, why he became knighted and why he also was able to take over the part, even though he didn't look completely like the first Paul McCartney, is because he's part of the Scottish Rites. So the Scottish Rites is a wing, a very high up level wing in the Masons and, and probably 
higher up in the Illuminati. Okay, this this doesn't say that in here, but I I, I have researched um, more about it since then, and I do believe he is his family is definitely part of the Scottish Rites. So I used to go to the Scottish Rites Hall, which I think was in either Santa Monica or it was close by uh, Santa Monica. A uh, really beautiful, huge. We had SGI meetings there back when it was called NSA, back in the 80s. We had our year-end general meeting near the Scottish Rites Hall, or we had it at the Shrine Auditorium, which the Shriners are, are also uh, like the, they're one of the high up Freemason groups, um, both Scottish Rites. And, and I wonder how we always got those places. I wonder what connections the uh, NSA at the time had with the... Uh, Illuminati or the uh, Scottish Rites or the uh, Masons or the uh, Sh Shriners because they're all parts of the same groups. The overarching one is the Illuminati, but in the Masons, the high ups are the uh, Shriners and the uh, uh, Scottish Rites is even probably higher than that. What, what incredible architecture if you go to the Scottish Rites Hall uh, it's as it's, it's big as the Shrine Auditorium. The Shrine Auditorium is where they have the Grammys, and we used to do our year-end general meetings there. I used to perform there on stage. My first performance when I was six years old was on the stage of the same place the Grammys are done, which is the uh, Shrine Auditorium, the Shriners, which is, <clears throat> as I said, high-level Freemason group. Um, I was six years old. I left my, my recorder at the... At the uh, <clears throat> practice, which was a park in Santa Ana, next to the Santa Ana Communities, next to the Santa Ana SGI Community Center, which is no longer there. It's moved to Brook Hollow. It was in a really bad neighborhood where <clears throat> it used to be a, a topless bar before it became the community center. <clears throat> anyway, I left my uh, recorder there, so I had to go on stage, my first huge performance in front of a really huge audience, playing air recorder. But they said, you're so small and you're up on stage with a bunch of little kids doing a Christmas song. No one's going to notice you don't have a recorder. If they do, who cares? Uh, and my brother was doing the gymnastics in some kind of like Christmas play thing. Doing somersaults and, and uh, cartwheels and shit. He was always part of the gymnastics team. I, I wish I... He, he was really good on the trampoline when he was a kid too. Okay, anyway. Enough going off on a tangent. So... Here we go again. It was she, so his, Helen, his grandmother, who uh, added his name to this Bible, which was the family Bible that had all, all the genealogy, and naming him as the 28th generation grandson of Sir Walla, William Wallace, who the Braveheart character was playing, portraying falsely. I was raised to honor that family heritage. The family stories paint an extremely different picture of my ancient grand, great grandfather, Sir William Wallace. He was knighted too, that's why they call him Sir. Um, anyway, I don't need to get back into that, why he was knighted anyway. We'll get into that another day. Maybe it'll talk about that more in the chapters I haven't yet read. Okay, Sir William Wallace. Then, what was predicted by Braveheart? Although I found the movie inspiring as well as entertaining, I did too. I, I enjoyed the movie, but I got, for some reason I got pissed off throughout the movie. Like, this is not the portrayal of the real person. Um, I also did that on September 11, 2001. I was like fucking pissed off at the government of the United States because I knew subconsciously that the government did it. Um, but at the time I thought it was because I was pissed off at them because they caused it to happen because of all the shit they were doing around the world at the time. But not really knowing why I was really that really super pissed off at the U.S. government, not at some people they were claiming did it, because I didn't think whoever did it was really responsible subconsciously. Um, so that's usually how you're, you're, you're. I learned in access consciousness if you get really pissed off at something, it's because there's a lie in there that you're not willing to acknowledge. So until you acknowledge the lie, you can't. You you'll be freaking pissed off. So I couldn't re realize why I was so pissed off at Mel Gibson and the playing of that character. Anyway, here we go. Now I know. Although I found the movie inspiring as well as entertaining and found the battle scenes to be somewhat similar to how they were explained to me, I noticed striking inaccuracies, assuming that our own family records were right. So anyone's family records could be a little bit... Uh, 
glor gl glorified to make it seem like some people that are might be done bad things are better than they are. All history is, is written that way. So the history of all people is usually written by the conquerors, and they always make themselves look out to be much better than they really were. So it depends on whose history you're reading. His story is his story. That's why it's called history. What about her story? Okay, anyway, that's a song I wrote. Her story, not history. Go check it out online. It's about burning witches. Although I found the movie... Oh, I just read that part. Okay, here we go. I noticed striking inaccuracies, assuming that our own family records were right. I also could not help wish that in all of Scotland they had found a single Scot to play a leading part. So there was no Scotsman's in the actual movie. A leading part, anyway. I have nothing against having Yanks playing minor roles. So he's calling Mel Gibson a Yankee. And have considerable esteem for Mel Gibson. Love him in many of his shows, but he did not look like, dress like, or sound like the William Wallace that I know. Essentially, Mel Gibson did not capture William Wallace's spiritual nature. It wasn't written into that very militantly oriented script. I do not have to I do not at all blame Gibson for any of these points. I just want to tell everyone more about the historical William Wallace whom I was honored to be named after. After all, now at last that I am telling you about the real me, it is an opportune time to also tell you about the real goodness of William Wallace. He was much more than a warrior. Okay, I'm going to drink a little. I always get so dehydrated when I'm reading these things. Ah, that was my ginseng tea that was hot today. And I went to go work out at the gym and came back. My room's freezing, so it's fr almost frozen cold. It's really good like that. Sweet ginseng tea. Straight from Korea. We bought big boxes of it. My wife found it online much cheaper than anywhere in Japan because if you buy real ginseng tea from Korea, it's very expensive in Japan, but she got it on some Amazon something. Anyway, I love going off on tangents. I know you guys love it too. So if you want to get you, if you're in Japan and you want to get fucking some good ginseng tea, don't fucking buy it at the Japanese stores because it's fucking ten times more of the same fucking brands. Anyway, almost anything in Japan you buy, you just go fucking look at the barcode and get all the code numbers and go look online and it's always like half price at least. Everything in the stores is fucking insanely priced in Japan. Even products made from Japan, you buy them in LA and you send them to America, send them to Japan. The shipping price, and it says made in Japan, is half the fucking price, even with the shipping, than if you bought it in Japan. A fucking uh, $800 microphone by uh, a Japanese company, a uh, good recording microphone, 800 bucks in Japan. I couldn't get it cheaper anywhere else in Japan. I bought it in LA for $500, sent it for $30 to ship it here. So I told the, all the music stores in Japan, I'm, I, I want to buy this in Japan because I know it's made in Japan, but I'm not going to pay almost double the price than it is in L.A. That's insanity. But they wouldn't give me a discount. So anyway, I ordered it online. It comes fucking made in Japan from L.A. If I can have price. Anyway, <coughs> probably the fucking Yakuza in, L in L.A. fucking get it fucking stolen out of backs of trucks and stuck and sell it to the fucking... Anyway, I don't know. There's always fucking some connect mafia connection, probably. Okay, I'll read you the books about fucking the mafia in, J in Japan on another date. There's some good books. You gotta read the one. Oh, I talked about them on other videos. Go fucking watch my other videos. Shut the fuck up. Okay. <laughs> After all, now that... Uh, now that... Once more. After all, now at last that I am telling you about the real me... It is an opportune time to also tell you about the real goodness of William Wallace. He was very much... He was much more than a warrior. Okay. Ellerslie in Ayrshire... Can't say these words. A-Y-R-S-H-I-R. Is where it says he was born. <coughs> 
to Margaret Crawford and Alan Wallace on a warm night, Tuesday, the 5th of August, uh, 1270. I died in 1280-something in my Japanese lifetime. Uh, I'll tell you more about that in another video, but I did already talk about it in many other videos, so you're going to go watch those if you want to know who I was. Okay, Sir William died on a Sunday. No, sorry, I didn't die in 1280. That's wrong. 13-something I died. Anyway, I was I was alive during the time he was born. The whole, almost his whole life. I take that all back. I, I get that one wrong. Okay. Sir Wo Sir William died on a Sunday, 23rd of August, uh, 1305. Let me just tell you when I was alive in my last, my life when I was in Japan, because I, uh, I'm, I'm assuming the historical records are pretty accurate on Wikipedia for my my last life one of my last lives at least five lives ago that I that I recall so far in my past life regression therapy sessions okay let's see I'm not gonna say who it is uh, let's see I'm just gonna type it in if you can read minds you're gonna know what I'm typing in so be the mind reader you truly be and you'll know exactly what I'm thinking uh, I gotta think of his name now. I just all of a sudden forgot. Uh, Frick. Oh. That's it. He used a priest name, so I have to uh, go by his priest name, even though I, I don't yet know his real name. i probably find that out soon. But his name was Sun and Moon. That much I'll tell you. Uh, so he almost... He was born 1260 and died 1333. So... I was born 10 years before Sir William Wallace. And I died... Uh, according to this Wikipedia source... 30, 20, 20 something days, 20 something years after he died. So I was much, much older than him. I was, uh, let's see, 60, 70, 80, 70, 80, 90, 10, 20, 30. I died at 63. Wow, I was pretty young. I thought I lived longer than that. Maybe I did, and maybe this record's wrong because uh, maybe I went into hiding like I did in a couple other lifetimes and I faked my death. We'll find out. When I get more readings on it. <clears throat> okay. Anyway, back to the freaking boring story. <laughs> no, it's not boring. Uh, so he died at age, let's see, he was born in 70, 80, 90, 105. He was only freaking 35 years old. Yeah. He got killed sent to England and got his head chopped off. Off with his head! A faithful lad in his early years, he learned to trust the Lord to strengthen him, to deliver him from evil, and to help him do the right thing, whatever it may be. This early training came from his parents and from the church, where, along with an education, he was taught love and respect for all of God's children. That love included the need to instill self-respect and self-rule. Self to him, the teaching of Jesus demanded full equality and individual rights. I believe that too. So anyone trying to say they're Christian by taking over another country is not fucking Christian at all. And denying people their rights, whether they're, they call themselves Christians or not, is completely antithesis to the teachings of Christ, because most of what we call Christianity is the Antichrist. It's the opposite of Christianity. The, or it's the opposite of what Christ taught. So Christianity is the Antichrist in most countries, 
of the world and in the most of the history of Christianity since the Roman government created Christianity and totally bastardized the teachings of Christ in his name. Anyway, one of my other lives I wrote, I was one of the main translators of the King James Bible, so uh, I happen to know that I didn't believe in even in the stories of the King James Bible, but I was commissioned to do it, and I did a really fun job of uh, encoding it with a, another story that you're going to find out when I figure it out. Okay, that love included the need to instill self-respect and self-rule. To him, the teachings of Jesus demanded full equality and individual rights. Through Bible study, he became entrenched in principles of liberty. He would go on to overcome all tyranny and all oppression. He felt that securing liberty was his Christian mission, and no one could rightly expect any less. All of this history, however accurate, is from that family book. So his family book is where he's getting all this history of his family because they kept the diaries of people and handed down through the family. And so a lot of times people don't have access to that, even historians of the actual family records unless they're in the family because they're afraid people will fuck up their records or burn them. Or A lot of people have had that happen to their family records when they didn't agree with the his story, which is the uh, ruler's myth called history. Sir William, Sir William's father was a God-fearing patriot who taught William that no Scot should acknowledge foreign jurisdiction over their God-given land. To him, it was as much anathema as the Jewish honoring Roman governance over Israel in Jesus' day. Alan Wallace would sooner be a zealot than a supporter of England's rule over Scotland. He openly refused to swear allegiance to King Edward or any other monarch of foreign land, as was required by British law of all Scottish landowners. Scottish pride and Alan's patriotic, freedom-loving rebelliousness, this is his, William Wallace's dad, drove Alan Wallace deep into seclusion with his older with his oldest son they traveled all about as fugitives from one from onerous tyrannous god I can't even say this word tyrannish tyranny tyrannous there we go tyrannous that's been out of, I've been freaking 12 years in Japan so I can't fucking remember how to say half these words I read them and then I don't say them out loud and I don't hear them out loud for many years and I fucking forget what they sound like. He was a fugitive from onerous, tyrannous English rule while William remained at home. So his older son, William Wallace would have been a priest had he been the oldest son, but since all priesthoods are based on, on a Confucianist uh, rankism and uh, nepotism and uh, yeah rankism mostly um, only the first son in a family could be a priest in most feudal societies that's why I think all priesthoods are corrupt because they're based on feudalism so if you want to get rid of feudalism you gotta get rid of priesthoods too regardless of what religion it is while William remained at home with his mother and younger brother stewing in the injustice without clear remedies. This conflict formed his educational context. When they heard rumors of insurrection against England, William's liberty training intensified until in 1291, which he was only 21 years old, in a battle at Loudon Hill, William's father and uncle were killed. So when he was 21, his father and uncle were killed in, in a battle trying to fight against the tyrannous British colonialism over their land. The impressionable teenager, he wasn't a teenager, he was 21. He was born on 1270. This was 20, 
1291, so he would have been 21 years old, but that's close enough to a teenager. The impressionable teenager turned from long-held hatred of English oppression to a new hatred of the English themselves. He hated their insistence on ruling a foreign people. It had gone too far, forcing Scots by the sword to swear allegiance to a power they hated was slavery. So can you imagine you hate a, another country because they're being abusive and oppressive to you and you have to fucking swear allegiance to them or you're going to get your head cut off. Boy, talk about uh, liberty and justice for all. Okay, but that's the uh, hypocrisy of most uh, so-called God-fearing Christian countries. He would die a free man. He hated them for killing the man he most respected, his God-fearing father, whose crime was not submitting to oppression. Uh, before his dad got killed, his lover got killed because, uh, and it's going to talk about more about it if I read the rest of the chapter. I just want to give you a little prelude to it because that was the shocking part to me more than his father. Before that, his his lover was killed because she refused to uh, submit to the sexual uh, advances of a British uh, sergeant or something like that. Anyway, you're going to read it soon. So he ended up killing that sergeant. Um, sergeant Pepper, no. Anyway, I think it was a sergeant. I'll find out. Lieutenant or something. William vowed in his heart that he too would never submit to English rule. And yet, while he was all torn up inside over the great loss he was feeling and over the political condition they were in, his life went on. His loss and his new resolve for freedom increased his devotion to God. He would, he would live his life in such a way that he could always expect God to help him. He placed himself in the Almighty's hands. So I believe he would have fucking lived if he wouldn't have been thinking there was something outside of him greater than him, which is some fucking some projection of, of human consciousness called God, which doesn't really exist. It's just, it's a creation. It's a, it's a, it's a, what is it called? It's a creation and an invention. There's no such thing as God, so if you haven't figured that one out, I'm God, you're God, I am He as you are He as you are me, and we are all together. We are all co-creating this reality. And as soon as you, every time you put your your power outside of you in some false uh, projection of, of your consciousness and call it better than you, then you're gonna you're gonna weaken your power and you're gonna get killed like this guy. That's why he got killed. Stupidity. Even no matter how good he was and how much he believed in this his teaching. If you think something's outside of you, and Jesus never thought that, because Christianity became so bastardized by the time the 1200s were around that it had nothing to do with the teachings of Christ. Very little to do, anyway. Here we go. William turned to the Psalms for direction, courage, and peace. To him, the wicked, the wicked spoken of were as the English oppressors. To know what and meshed William Wallace's mind from his teen years until the end of his life, try reading Psalms, inserting the word English for wicked or heathen. Your understanding of the man will take on an extraordinary new depth. I will put some example in here, examples in here, but to get the full impact, have a day of it. Have a day of it. Reading nothing else. So if you just read all the Psalms, and every time you get to the word "wicked" or "heathen," put in the word "English," which is what William Wallace did. Where every time he read the Psalms, it's a long reading. He memorized them too, and he would preach them all around to get people wild up to fight the British wicked uh, heathens. It will blow your mind. It will make adjustments. In the, uh, I will make adjustments in the text as I go to show you how William Wallace read it. You can check your own Bibles to discover what is new in my William Wallace rendition. I'll do the first 
two psalms for you. Then, by this pattern, you'll know how it went on from there. Quote, every time he's going to get to the word heathen or wicked, he's going to add in the word English. That's what William Wallace did. Blessed is William, who walks not in the laws of the English, but his de but his delight is in the law of the Lord. He shall be like a tree that brings forth his fruit, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. The English are not so, but are like the meaningless shaft that the wind drives away. Therefore the English shall not stand. William yelled lines like, Why do the English rage and imagine a vain thing? The king of the earth set themselves against the Lord. He that sits in the heavens shall laugh. He will have the English in derision. Then will he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. The Lord hath said unto me, Ask of me, and I shall give you this land occupied by the English for thine inheritance, and these parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O you kings, serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Be wise now, O you kings, kiss this son of Scotland, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled. Okay, I'm going to end right there because I'm going to read the rest of this. I just read uh, the first... One, two, three, four, five, almost five and a half pages of this chapter. I'm going to read the other half. One, two, three, four, five, five and a half pages. So I read half the chapter. I'm going to read the other half chapter next time. I hope the uh, publishers don't come down on me for that because I'm sure the, the actual author, not the encoder, will be happy for me to clear up this on YouTube, I'm sure he would like to, but he was he's a he's bound by contracts of silence. So if he were to speak, he would be seriously fucked with and probably lose all of his inheritance that he took from the family of well, he, he created more more money in the in the years he's been alive than, than the first Paul McCartney created, but it was because he used the name of Paul McCartney and the fortunes of Paul McCartney to uh, be the new Paul McCartney, so maybe they would try to deny him and uh, do a bunch of other crap to him if he if he were to come out. So I'm sure he's happy. I'm I'm not meaning to uh, to violate the uh, copyright laws or anything like that. I'm just here to spread the word that he he desires to spread, which he can't spread. So peace out, all you <clears throat> sons of men. Okay, I'll be back next time for the rest.